nurturing the growth of population, we pull a tree trunk from the forest. From a tree growing like an undamaged vine to erect our fort gate in the village. With rituals and festivity, we pull this gate and put it up with haste so that passers-by can appease the Supreme Being in front of the gate for the prosperity of our future generations. Since the days of their forefathers, the people of the Angami community kept their villages fortified by erecting fort gates at strategic points. These gates are called Karus. A series of rituals were performed before and after the construction of a gate. The pulling of the huge gate from the forest to the village involved the entire community and required all menfolk to dress in full traditional attire. Karus had two main objectives, one for physical security and the other as a symbol of pleasing the supreme god called Kipu Hro, by which they invoked its blessings for prosperity and for increase of the village populace. Today, the Karus are depleted and the fortifications are no more. But territorial and social boundaries are being maintained through customary laws of inheritance and gates are kept under repair to mark the physical evidences of territorial demarcations. Viswema, a typical Angami village, is situated in the southern part of Nagaland. Today, the entire community has come out to construct the village road, clean and repair retaining walls and drains, and decorate the community hall for a special function in the village. These works are voluntary as every member of the village is obliged to accept any community responsibility as a personal concern. Though the elaborate rituals accompanying such important customs have considerably diminished, community bonds in the village society are still kept alive through community feasts, festivals, community work and above all the structure in which the society is formed. Lodi, a farmer of Viswema village, also runs a grocery shop in the village where he sells an assorted range of items from soaps to food grains. He is one of the few members who still practices the age-old traditional rituals and customs. Like all other Naga communities, the social organization of Viswema village is based on a system of segmented kinship. A typical Angami village is segmented into three or four smaller units called Thinyors, named after different forefathers and commonly termed Kales. Each Kale occupies and has complete control over definite territories of the village with distinctive boundaries. However, all are involved in a constant effort to maintain the collective interest of the village. Viswema has four kales, namely Zieri, Rotsa, Pavo and Kirasu. Jeri kale is again divided 
into two exogamous gland segments called putanso and thakrotso. Each is further divided into several exogamous lineages called sara. Lodi is a member of the macrosara under the thakro segment. The term Sara, meaning people of the same blood, clearly indicates the kinship ties that exist. Each individual in the community occupies a specific position based on descent, which determines his or her choice of marriage partner, social obligations and expectations. Today, migration has been taking place in a large scale. People have been uh, migrating from rural area to urban areas, particularly among the educated group. But even among those people who have been migrating to urban areas from the villages, I find that they still have their holdings in the villages. That means they still have their strong attachment to their kinship ties. In the evenings, Lodi sometimes sits in his Kale's Dahu, or meeting place, to discuss day-to-day -day matters. Each Kale has its own Dahu, both for political and social gatherings. <laughs> All important matters and issues of collective interest are raised and discussed at the Dahu. The Kale is thus not only a kinship unit, but also a self-contained socio-political unit. Traditionally, the oldest man of the Kale is appointed as the pizza, or Kale elder. However, with the advent of Christianity, only the oldest non-Christian qualifies for this post, even though there may be another Christian who's older than him. Lineages are patriarchal, and men control the Angami clans. All important decisions pertaining to administrative and policy matters are resolved by the menfolk. During 1978-79, Viswema, along with all villages of Nagaland, adopted the concept of village councils, which hitherto had not existed. The emergence of the village council as the apex political and administrative body has brought certain administrative restructuring of the village. Yet, it has not diminished the political and social importance of the kale. Certain elderly men, who possess good auditory skills and are wealthy enough to host guests, are appointed to act as gaumburas, or government agents, and are chosen by majority consensus. The decision of the Kale elders in matters of law and order are binding on all members. <laughs> Only when the problem is unresolved at the Kale level, it is put before the village council. If the problem is still not resolved at the village level, it goes to the higher courts. However, instances of disputes going out of the village political arena are very rare.
Since earlier times, women are not allowed to participate in decision-making processes either in the kale or in the village council meetings. However, in recent times, women organizations in the form of societies have gradually been constituted at kale and village levels. These have helped them considerably in making decisions regarding activities specific to them. Another important aspect of Angami community life is the Pelikro, or the age groups. All children born within a span of five years are organized into social groups called Pelikro of which they become members for life. Every individual in the village is a member of one or the other Pelikro. In ordinary days, members are expected to help each other in working the field, especially during sowing and harvesting, which requires heavy labor. During the marriage of any of its members, other members are allotted specific works and are treated as special guests. Unlike some other Naga tribes, the Pelikro system in the Angami community is only a social support system used during special times such as birth, marriage or death. In no way is it linked with the political structure and organization of the community. The Pelikro is thus basically a unit for the reciprocal exchange of services through which people are trained in inculcating the community spirit of cooperation. The smallest unit is called kilokro, or family segment, generally identified with the occupant's kinship affiliation to the kale. <laughs> Lodi's family consists of his wife and their children. The true word for such a family unit is misokweswe, a unit of food consumption and property ownership which amply defines the functions of a nuclear family. Like most other households of the village, Korele, Lodi's wife, bears the bulk of household chores and takes major responsibilities in looking after the family food requirements. She also distributes domestic and agricultural duties among her daughters and prepares them for their adult roles. After the household work is over in the morning, she goes to the field where she works the whole day. Lodi's wife also owns a paddy field that has been gifted by her father. Lodi and his wife jointly work the field, but Lodi knows that he has no control over this particular property. If she did not have a daughter, this land would be given back to one of her brothers. But Corelli has several daughters, and she plans to gift this plot to one of them. Lodi's ancestral family site, along with the house, called Kalwe, had been passed on to his youngest brother, as is the custom among the Angami Nagas. Lodi also will pass on his house to his youngest son, who will look after him and his wife in their old age.
As a member of the Makrosara, Lodi has inherited from his father the rights of ownership and access to all the land and forest which are collectively owned by the Makrosara and the Zeri Kale. These rights are automatically enjoyed by his sons also. Resources such as land, forests and water bodies that may be owned individually or collectively by the clan or lineage are controlled by men only and are handed down from father to son. No, Boys generally sit with their fathers, learning about their clan and their responsibilities as future custodians of their territory and resources. Harvest is over. It's time to invoke the blessings of the gods and purify oneself and the community of ills and misfortunes. After performing the rituals known as Gena, Lodi prepares to set out and celebrate Sekreni festival along with the rest of his Kailan village. Sekre means pure and Ni means festival. The Sekreni Gena, or the purification ritual, can only be performed by men and is observed to ensure good health and prosperity during the coming year. Bringing home the purified water early in the morning, the ritual begins, with the men of the household holding a little amount of rice over the fire for a little while symbolizing the abundance of food for the family hearth and thereby invoking the blessings of the gods. The Sekreni Gena takes three days to complete. Men cook and eat in a separate hearth and women are not allowed to approach them. During this period all sorts of work comes to a standstill as it is taboo to work or leave the village. On the fourth day, the Thekra here, a session of singing and feasting starts. This is the best and fun-filled part of the festival, 
where young men and women sit together and sing traditional songs far into the night, drinking jugs of the best rice beer and consuming plates of meat. Such festivity renews old ties and establishes new ones. Christianity made its way into the Naga society nearly 130 years ago. Since then, the majority of the Angamis have embraced Christianity. Today, the celebration of Sekreni incorporates both Christian ethics and traditional beliefs. Christians as well as non-Christians join together in celebrating the occasion. But only non-Christians observe the traditional rituals and the Gena period. What is important here is that the essence of the Sekreni binds them all together as a community and is sacred to them all. We feel we have to uh, revive the grandeur of Sekrini and therefore we are now giving much importance to Sekrini again. And uh, as in the past, now when we celebrate Sekrini, people come together singing uh, in their traditional dresses. So when they get together, you know, they, this will suddenly strengthen their bindings. As the sun rises to herald the beginning of a new day, the Naga community, with all the progress it has made till date, still appears to look much like the one that was there in the days of the forefathers. The basic character of the bonds within the community is still very strong and at its best. Oh, oh, oh. 